Hello, I'm Linda and I'm going to talk to you today and show you some uh, printmaking with leaves and plants on the allotment. Um, the sun is was shining, it's not quite now. Uh, the clouds are coming up, but it's dry and I can hear the birds singing. So it's a lovely place to be, hoping it won't rain in the middle of it, but I'll carry on. So I've taken some plants today uh, from the allotment. This is some mint, some peppermint, and um, it smells fabulous. The fragrance is really nice. What I'm going to do is ink it up and print it today. So I've got some liquid ink here. This is a block printing watercolour uh, sort of ink, and it's very good for using outdoors because it's non-toxic it's water based and water washable so it doesn't harm anything when you wash it, wash it off your roller or your tray outside this roller is quite a cheap easily available roller with the red handle and that's what i'm going to start with today so i've rolled the ink until there's a sort of hissing noise you won't be able to hear it but there is a slight hissing noise. You don't want the ink too thick. It's better to apply a few uh, thin layers. So I'm going to roll it over the, the leaves and I've chosen the side where you can see both the stem and the uh, leaf and the veins as well. And as I press on it, actually, the perfume of the peppermint is, is stronger and stronger. It's lovely. The harder you press, the less detail you get from the veins. So you can vary the amount of detail you get by doing that. And there are fabulous patterns within the leaves and in the shapes of the leaves. And that's what I'm trying to, to get today. Right, I think that's probably about right. Let's see what we've got. Um, these rollers have got something to stand them on. So you can stand them up that way without getting the ink on everything and without damaging your roller. <coughs> so I'm taking a piece of paper this is very thin paper, so should work very well. It's the kind of paper that you use for a photocopier or a computer. And I'm going to place another one on the top. No matter how careful you are, you will get some on the other side. So I'm going to place that on the top. And I'm going to transfer the ink now by pressing. Now, you can do it with your fingers, and that might do. That might be enough, actually. It might do what you want. Um, and you can check, to some extent, by having a look. Just peel up the corners. You need to get a grip. There we are. And you can see how well it's transferring. Um, you can also use a clean roller. And of course you can usually get a harder pressure by doing that and more detail. Or a wooden spoon is a good one. A lot of printmakers use a wooden spoon with a circular movement held flat so you can apply the pressure. I've also got a baron. This is something that particularly popular originally in Japan for printing wood blocks. This is a modern one, a nylon one. And you can see the ink's coming through on the back now. Or the traditional one, I've got in my pocket somewhere. This is one made with bamboo, stretched tight. And you can hold it on the back and pressing a circular movement with that. 
much more of a traditional approach. But you don't need that. You can just use um, a wooden spoon which, or a clean roller, which is what I've done. So when you think you might have enough, take off the top one and actually you've got a bit of a ghost print there. And then take off your, in my case, peppermint. I'm going to put that there for the moment. And you can see that it's rather beautifully clean. You've got a clean edge to it. You've got the shape. You've got the texture of the leaves. Where I pressed harder, wow, the wind's getting up now. I'm going to put a stone on that. When the, where I pressed harder on the leaves, it's come out more solid colour. Uh, and where I've been lighter, then it's, um, it's picked up more of the veins, just the veins. Now, I need to put this somewhere so it doesn't blow away. I'll take that one and put it down there for a moment and rescue it later. Now, I've got a variety of, of leaves here and um, this is quite a good way of preserving them because if you don't use them the first day, they fold up, they dry out and when you roll the ink on them, the leaves will break. So you're better off using something like this. It could be any paper, but I found this handy and I've still got one. And you can use it as a sort of traveling press for your leaves in between each page. Now I've assembled here uh, a piece of kale that is a bit discolored, so isn't the best one for eating. And that's got fabulous uh, indentations and patterns. I've got a nasturtium leaf and the back of it particularly inks up well. Here's a beetroot that I've cut to make it flat. And the same thing, it was a thinning. We were testing the size of, you know, how big are the beetroots. Same thing with the carrot, it's a thinning. And the same with an onion. Another one, of course, that you find on most allotments, borage just seems to plant itself. It's got these fabulous little blue flowers. And there are birds around and of course they leave feathers. So they're quite nice to print as well. But I'm going to do another one now using a different colouring. This is a green. <clears throat> I've mixed some blue and yellow together. And that's a little bit too thick, but that one is thin. Better to have a few thin coats than one thick. And I'm going to try it with that cabbage, which I put here. And of course you can use coloured paper. Yeah, so that's, that's a, a similar size to the one we were using just now. I'm going to leave that ready. Wow, the wind's trying to take things away. Okay, so I'm going to use this green ink now. I don't know if you can see how, how amazing those patterns are just on a piece of kale. All the cabbage um, family have got these fabulous patterns, actually. Right, that's that one ready. the 
face on the top. Inky, I'm just going to wipe them on a piece of paper I've got in there. I'm going to use this one to rub on the back to transfer yeah you can see it come if you've got quite thin paper which works easiest actually for hand printing you can see the shape and the pattern coming through the back of the paper. I put this one up the other way this time so when I peel it up I can see how it's going. Oh yeah. So that's how that one came out. Now in my experiments here this morning um, I'm just trying a couple of colours and a couple of different things to show you how easy it is and how fabulous these patterns are. And if you're using herbs, the perfume, the fragrance from those herbs is released as you're printing. But what I want to do now is to show you a few examples of some I've created earlier. your paper cut to this sort of size and it can be folded in the middle you could print a piece across the back so you've made your own card which particularly in these times where we can't always see people we want to maybe send something personal it's quite a good idea this one was actually um, I printed it twice in slightly different ways this was a sprout leaf so the leaf on a sprout plant uh, incredible i've never looked so closely actually at it and i love the shape so that's three possibilities for cards and you can if you've got a square own envelope they fit in pretty well this is one i printed with a, a silvery gray color ink and you can see it's the mint that I started off with today and it it folds quite nicely and it goes into the to the envelope working larger size this is one where I, I collaged on a small lino print that I'd already done and then printed with nasturtiums and a bit of a vine and vine leaves in different colors the overlap and give you this layered much more patterned look on a colored paper obviously here's another one which is a combination of those cabbage and sprout leaves I mentioned earlier it's much more subtle because the colors I've used are much more similar in tone to the background uh, of the paper this is another one with the cabbage leaves. I've really got into the cabbages this week. Um, in the red ink. Again, it's not as strong a contrast as if you print with black on white paper. But I like the subtle effects as well. Um, and I think I've got one more to show you. And this is a larger one. I'd already prepared the red background I just put ink on a piece of perspex, the perspex you saw me using earlier actually, and rubbed that until I got the red background. And when it had dried, I printed over it mint, nasturtiums, little bits of um, marjoram flowers. We've got a lot of wild marjoram that grows just so easily. But again, the perfume from that is fabulous. And I printed in the three colors um, all on the same large sheet. So there's lots of possibilities with this kind of printing. It's simple, you don't need a lot of equipment. Uh, you can use acrylic or paint, any other paint if you want to. I like particularly, and there's a lot of makes that, make, that do this, 
I particularly like the water-based block printing watercolour inks that you can buy. They're very economical, you can use, you could just buy the one black and you can use them for, well I've had this one a couple of years now and it cleans off very easily, you only need water and it's perfectly safe. So that's just an introduction of what you could do if you're printing with leaves, with plants and the amazing structures you can really discover by printing.